back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today we're looking at this lovely specimen here, which isn't so lovely anymore. The original filming of this episode showed it vibrant and green, but unfortunately the video and sound quality wasn't good enough, so this is a redo, technically. Now, what are we looking at? The scientific name is Cucumis sativus, or cucumber. And there are actually two varieties in here, uh, Pickling and Space Master, give or take. Well, let's see. So, starting off, they are in the family Cucurbitaceae, which means, you know, the cucumber family is unto its own, so to speak. It is native to India, but has been naturalized elsewhere. And in fact, I recall a patch of these naturalized in New Jersey that would come back from rotted fruit year after year. So, it can return from seed. And it's the actual flesh of the cucumber provides a nice lump of fertilizer and insulation against frost. Anyway, in zones USDA, USDA zones 4 through 12, it is an annual. And it needs a bare minimum of 5 hours of daylight per day, sun per day. So it's full sun, bare minimum of 5 hours. Its soil pH preference is 6 to 6.5 and preferably the soil should be loamy but well drained. Well, in the sand hills, we guarantee that well drained part. Its height can be for a dwarf variety, or a bush variety rather, one to two feet and a width of one to two feet, whereas a vine type is six to eight feet with a width of six to eight feet. And unfortunately, you can see it kind of here. However, this is dozens of plants going on here, and it's escaping down there there and up there yes oh by the way that's the castor bean now anyway put that camera back now here's some facts cukes are a what's called a peepo which when i first looked it up I honestly thought that was the thing you look through the door to see who was knocking but that's beside the point that is a botanical berry with a hard outer rind and no internal divisions which pretty much describes cukes really well when you think about it now, cukes have been grown as a food for at least 3,000 years, so humans have known about it for a long time. Generally speaking, though, they come in four categories, slicing, pickling, gherkin, and burpless. Now, in the case of what you see before you, pickling, obviously for pickling, Space Master is essentially burpless, but is great for pickling. So it's both, depending on the size you pick it at. If you pick it at full size, which it will produce a few si full size cuke, the seeds may produce burps, but at a younger stage, they're underdeveloped and less problems. You can technically pickle any kind of cucumber, regardless of size. It's just a matter of if you want to chew on the seeds or not. Now, the burping part itself comes from the digestion of the seeds, the compounds in them. There's fiber, and your body doesn't quite know what to do with it, and the bacteria in your gut and your, your stomach acids and so forth produce it as a byproduct. Additionally, birth, specifically burpless cukes are parthenocarpic and have softer, more digestible skin as well as a lack of seeds. Now, I just want to point in, I want to point out that burpless cukes are typically, because people will go, well, how do they reproduce? Well, that's a little weird, actually. Um, technically, burpless cukes will eventually produce something. There are residuals of seeds in parthenocarpic fruits but usually, the bur truly burpless ones are picked at a stage before seed development, and that's how they get around that. These particular plants have a longer development cycle, so you can get them before they produce, essentially, seed offspring. That's actually how they do it. It's not like watermelons where you need a pollinator watermelon that produces, a, well, produces, I wouldn't sound ugly, but they're not palatable for people, and then the actual seedless watermelons on the other vine. So it's totally different. Now, about cukes. As you can see, my specimens are at the end of their life cycle almost. There's some green in there, but there's a lot of yellow. And that's the thing about cukes. They're great for a while, and then once they get to a certain point, they're spent. So a lot of the vines in here are actually dead, and the green ones were the ones growing inside and now have burst forward. I over -sowed. Now what happened this year in the garden was I sowed the first batch of cukes via plug and the slugs and the snails and the pill bugs conspired to destroy them. Only two survived and I'm not sure if those two are alive but at this point I would imagine they're produced out and that's it. 
because normally you can only get about optimally grown 10 to 20 cukes off a well-grown large vine that's allowed to sprawl fully. And then after that, it just sort of peters out and dies. These are at the point that they are basically about to become compost. I'm letting them do one last hurrah for this video. There are, I'm gonna move the camera, a few little ones that may make it, and then that's it, that's it. Once we hit August, this is, the time is nigh for these poor vines. However, as you can see, the time is not so nigh for that gigantic castor bean, which when I said the leaves get two feet wide, I was not joking. These are actually bigger than that. I underestimated, but that's okay. So, first and foremost, pollinators. In the morning, when I come out here, here's a flower. See, they're a little tiny and they're everywhere. There's another one in there. I will see honeybees and other pollinators going to town in here. This entire vine is practically vibrating when it's full of flowers, and this one actually is vibrating with pollinators doing what they do best. And it's not just honeybees. Oh, we have a surprise. I thought I picked them all, but I was wrong. Look at that. At this stage, out of the way, leaf. At that stage, the cukes are edible, but the seeds are possibly pushing maturity. There's another one hiding in there. Cukes hide their fruit really well, which is why all that, all those trellis things you see at the store for cukes, this is why they exist, because people know this is a problem. When you plant them like this, you're going to lose a few unfortunately, and I'm sure I'll have cukes, cukes coming up in this region for quite some time. But back to what I was saying earlier. I planted a line of them neatly. I built a trellis that went up to almost eight feet high. The slugs and the snails conspired to destroy them, and only two survived, and then I used beer traps to wipe out the snails and the slugs. Then, while refreshing the beer traps, I seed-bombed this entire bed all of this, thinking 50% of the seed would come up. Oh boy, was I wrong. About all the seed came up and it became a cucumber tangle. So folks, if you have to re-sow, re with the same pattern you used the first time. Do not repeat my mistake. The whole point was to have a cucumber wall that could block this region, but also be very productive. And it has been very productive. Pounds of cucumbers have come out of this patch. Next year, hopefully, if I do a do redux on this video, a complete redo, with a new patch, that will look very different. So, that's all I have for you on cucumbers. It's not a very complicated topic. I will tell you this, they do love their water, though. Water them thoroughly and regularly. Fertilizer during productive times once every week to once every two weeks as much composted manure or compost as you can put down because they love that crap. Now, with that said, that's all I have for you for cubes. That was my last thought. So, if you like this video, hit like. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. At the bottom of this video description, you'll see a link to the Forge blog. And beyond that, thank you for watching. And as always, folks, keep them growing.